Hello, everybody. My name is Pavel Sorokin, and I am pleased to deliver a presentation on personality transformative agency for the destructuralized society. This is uh, a theme which may be not really um, known to personality psychologists, uh, but I think that uh, some cooperation between psychological science and uh, other disciplines may be fruitful. And as a sociologist, I think that uh, some ideas and uh, findings that sociologists gathered in recent times may be important for, uh, for the progress of personality psychology. So this paper is based on research delivered under the framework of Human Capital Multidisciplinary Research Center. This is a big project which tries to find the new understanding of personality of a human being. And uh, uh, I think that uh, some insights from today's symposium may be important for our progress in this big project further. Um, and after all, my name is Pavel Sarukin and I am uh, from High School of Economics. Uh, I am head of laboratory for human potential and education research. And that is why I will have some uh, references to education today, but not too much. Uh, so I would like to start with the major um, conceptual framework which, um, which shapes social science and social humanitarian science, I would say, debates uh, throughout more than a century. This is the question of structure and agency. And uh, to be more precise, it is about uh, how uh, to relate with each other, individual and social environment. And uh, uh, in this slide, you can see two pictures. And the difference uh, between them is that on the left one, uh, the left scheme uh, provides very strict uh, formal structure, which organizes the interactions between the person who is above and those who are below. And on the right side, there is a group of people standing around the table uh, with their papers in a mess. So uh, you don't see structure directly uh, in this right uh, picture. Uh, however, uh, social science is really uh, very, I would say, uh, persistent in trying to show that structure still exists and it really dominates what happens not only in society, but what happens with personality, with a person, with an individual. Uh, this slide is uh, perhaps the most theoretically important from the first part of my presentation. Uh, uh, it is uh, an attempt to classify the major theoretical approaches in disciplines of social and humanitarian science uh, to this approach, uh, to, to this question of structure and agency. Uh, you can see on the left side, sociological structuralism, psychological behaviorism, and neoclassical economics as uh, uh, very influential uh, directions and streams of research, which uh, claim that personality is totally determined by structure. So actually, working in the framework of these uh, theories, you would never uh, think that a person, that an individual may correctly transform structures. Because for instance, for sociologists, something like class structure or labor division or the different types of social certification systems directly determine how does individual behaves within a structure. For, for psychological behaviorism, you know this better than me as psychologists, uh, individual is, is a person who reacts on uh, uh, external stimuli. And for neoclassical economics, it is market, which decides who does what. So it, it claims that on the one hand, individuals uh, are the core objects of analysis, but on the other hand, uh, current economic science claim that uh, every individual is rational and uh, uh, he's calculating uh, possible benefits and uh, chooses the option which is most beneficial uh, for uh, him or her. So this doesn't really leave any place for transformative agency changing the room, changing the rules of the, of the whole game. And on the uh, right side, you see four uh, groups of theories, uh, critical theories, 
which are mostly elaborated, for instance, in education. Uh, these are field theories like Pierre Bourdieu theory and other theories known in, in social sciences. Activity theory, which was developed very actively in, in, in Russia and Soviet Union, and entrepreneurship theories, which are trying to um, look a bit differently on the question of structure agency relation, but still, personality is almost totally determined by structure because uh, uh, these theories are trying to show that uh, even if structures are changing and if this happening with some contribution from individual, uh, that logics of contribution is still determined by the logics of structure itself. And the best uh, illustration here is Marxism and neo-Marxism, which is the basis of critical theories and the field theories, and also of activity theory in a way, uh, which claims, I remind you that uh, structures are changing, revolutions are happening, but they're happening because there is structural logics and individuals are only tools in the hands of history, making this major transformation happen. So according to current mainstream in sociology, economics, perhaps to some less extent psychology, transformative agency aimed at changing, trans transforming structures surrounding individual. So this stuff is almost impossible. Uh, but what happens in the real life? Let's look at the case of labor and uh, working life. What happens there? So this slide demonstrates uh, that according to empirical analysis, to empirical data, if you look what is changing in the nature of worker tasks in US economy, and I can, I can assure you that in European economy, the same thing is happening. There is research showing this. So from 60s or at least from uh, 80s, you can see a rapid increase in types of worker tasks related to non-routine analytical and interpersonal activities. So this is something that principally beyond rigid structure, because it is non-routine. It is not reproduction of the same activity, but doing something and you doing something novel. And routine types of activity are decreasing. This slide perhaps is even more illustrative. It shows that uh, if you look at how does labor market change, you will find that corporate employment, employment in corporations is rapidly decreasing. So even before pandemic and recent events of uh, 2022, uh, there was strict evidence that freelancer economy is emerging as a dominant one. So in US, the majority of workers will freelance by 2027, or perhaps even earlier. What does it mean to be a, a freelancer? It means that you do not have structure within which you are embedded. You don't have rules which you have to follow. It is the opposite situation when you have to uh, act as an entrepreneur in a way. You have to find your partners. You have to find someone who will buy what you are doing. You have to discipline yourself. And this is very important for understanding the structure agency relation. Uh, this slide is, I would say, not empirical. It is a kind of uh, um, metaphor that uh, consultants leader Deloitte uh, uses to demonstrate what is happening and the role of technology in these changes. So technology is changing very fast, but the problem is that the bigger the entity, the more difficult it is to react to these changes, to, to, uh, uh, to use the opportunities that these changes in technology open. And that is why individuals are, more, are first to get benefits of technological changes, because it is, very, it is much more easier to adopt yourself to do something novel by yourself than to make a company do something different because a new technology has emerged. And uh, public policy and states are even more rigid and even more uh, conservative in, in, in changing. Uh, I would also say that uh, this entrepreneurial change in uh, management discussion is, is uh, very, interestingly, very interestingly reflected in Stanford sociological uh, research uh, by John Mayer, for, for instance, who showed that if you take Harvard Business Review uh, and look how does the major emphasis change throughout uh, last 100 years, 100 years, you will find that actually the entrepreneurialism rhetoric is increasing and managers are more and more, especially in, in the recent 10 years or 15 years, 
are expected to be entrepreneurs. Uh, so this is a summary of, of what I have told uh, recently. So change in modes of employment, in tasks at work, in logics of organizational development, all these are examples of destructuration. Uh, so uh, uh, this, this slide is uh, a more academic uh, and detailed uh, description of what destructuration is. So I would like to stress that it doesn't mean the structures uh, disappear. They do not disappear. They simply become more dependent upon the proactive transformative action of an individual. And also, I would like to stress the difference between our approach and the approach of uh, some mainstream scholars who argue that agency and structure are somehow uh, unite in a single entity, and also the difference with uh, so-called postmodernist theories who claim that actually individual becomes an entity in, in its own world. So it is not correct according to sociological theory of destructuration. Um, uh, now I would like to have some very brief illustration of practical uh, crisis, which happens partly because of destructuration. So you see that global economic growth will slow, uh, uh, partly because corporations are inefficient, partly because the agency of uh, employees and managers is insufficient. Uh, you see that the more and more people live in what is called fr fragile states, so states become fragile. This is exact illustration of destructuration because structures are more uh, fragile, more flexible. Uh, so I already said that pandemic and recent events made the crisis tendencies even, even, even worse. And that is why it is very important to understand how practically uh, psychology and other sciences can help society to deal with this destructuralized uh, society. And I would like to finish by three points, which may uh, more directly relate to personal psychology. I'm not a personal psychology, uh, uh, personality psychology specialist, so it is just kind of my uh, view outside of the discipline of what, what may be some interesting directions for research. So first of all, existing dimensions of personality analysis may require revision and extension. For instance, it has already been shown that some features that are usually perceived as, as uh, deviance, as something even pathological, uh, becomes not only normal, but becomes beneficial, for instance, for entrepreneurs. So if, if personality X is a new environment when it is expected and it is important to do something on shaping structures, then a new well field for personality um, analysis emerges. For instance, and in addition, the evaluation issue is becoming very important because you, you need to have will to operate in a situation when there is no external stimuli. Also, uh, the traditional uh, analysis of personality, for instance, through the big five framework uh, emerged in the mid 20th century before destructuration began. So all, all these uh, traditional uh, lenses of looking at personality are extremely and increasingly criticized, perhaps because there, is, there are some demand for extension the understanding of personality. And also even new dimensions for personality analysis may be required. And on this slide, I show three very direct ideas directly stemming from the idea of transformative agency about what can be the new look on personality. So if transformative agency becomes a very important part of what personality does, then types of this agency may be uh, used as uh, uh, foundations for personality assessment. For instance, you may, you may distinguish between gradual improvement and supporting of existing structures like innovative work behavior. You may also distinguish it from radical transformations of existing structures when you say that, hey, let's produce not planes, but trains but the company remains the same and the team remains the same. And also it is different from starting new companies, starting new businesses, new ventures, entrepreneurship in its classical understanding. It's just an example of uh, economic field. And my last point will be about the traditional uh, question about uh, how can we understand personality? How can we become the object of, of research? Well, the structurations 
uh, brings new problems here because if destructuration is happening, it means that there are no uh, solid reproducing themselves contexts, that personality changed this con context proactively and continually, and also that personality itself becomes the subject of transformation. Then what can be the fixed entities in the research design? It is a, it is a problem, it is a question. I think that some psychologists may be, uh, well, uh, useful to offer some, some suggestions here. So uh, that is all, I believe I was very pleased to deliver this presentation. I hope we have, we'll have a fruitful discussion in this symposium. Thank you very much.